Are you serious? Are you serious? Wow! Welcome to Prime Time Live! Live, 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 live. I know it's a couple minutes early, but we got to get on this, guys. The Cascadia Subduction Zone has been weakened. And we've got a full report on a lot of on this whole issue and a whole lot more. So let me get in the studio. Let's get this thing started. Are you serious? Are you serious, guys? Let's get this thing started. All right. I'm going in there. Unbelievable. Get some water. Get some coffee and calm down. All right. Here we go. But this uh, Cascadia subduction zone has been weakened why because 6.6 6.8 6.5 earthquakes hit early this morning and um there's been aftershocks i understand all of that wait i forgot to turn the uh i forgot to hit the camera so hang on a second i mean i understand all of that um uh, as far as earthquakes and and you know and aftershocks but here's the thing guys this cascadia this cascadia subduction zone this has been a concern of guys like dutch sense and a whole lot of folks who really watch this close and now they know they everyone knows the experts are saying that uh we're on the brink here okay uh it, it the big one's coming that's the word we're getting everywhere the big one is coming i know what it feels like i live on the new madrid fault line area uh, not right down in the st louis area or memphis tennessee area but certainly we live on this thing that if there's a massive quake like in 1811 or 1812 we're going to know about it it'll reshape the mississippi river we we understand that but don't worry about us don't Look, I know about uh, San Andrea fault line. I understand how you feel in San Francisco area. Uh, I know what you mean, Los Angeles, but hey, Cascadia subduction zone was hit hard this morning with this massive three mega earthquakes. And no way, there's no way that they're out of the woods yet. I wanna welcome everybody. We're live tonight at our new backup YouTube channel, our backup YouTube channel called Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. And uh, wow, I'm glad you guys are subscribing and uh, everybody's showing up here. Also, we're live tonight. I want to say hi to everybody at New Livestream and Roku Satellite Television. Also, Periscope, good to see all of you here tonight and PaulBegleyProphecy.com. Also, the, uh, we got folks that are with us that are uh, listening live on the direct radio line. They dialed the number 605-472-5791. And of course, yes, this, this is the Albania flag. I know it's here. Yes, the flag from Albania. We know it's here, okay? Um, but, uh, so we'll put it back there. Our, our Sylvester is watching in Albania. He sent the flag. We know it's here. And there's people watching all over the world. Um, a 6.1 earth. Uh, 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 yeah, it's really, Holly, you're right. It's great to see that the backup channel is now already over 6,000 subscribers and uh, growing extremely fast. And we want to see that during the next 70 days as we're going to be doing live broadcasting right here at the uh, uh, backup channel on YouTube. The name of the channel, of course, Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. Okay, so for the next 70 days, we'll be doing live broadcasting here. And um, so let's just build this channel because even whenever we start going back to broadcasting at the main channel, you know, We'll just keep broadcasting here too. Why not? I mean, we'll just uh, open the door and I, if, if we can do that, I think we can, but even if we can't, this, at least we build this channel and there's a lot more to come. Um, yes, there's a lot happening. I want to say hello to Melissa out there, Miss ZD. I hope you're feeling better out there. Also, I want to say hi to uh, Love and Obey and uh, 
Uh, also, Michelle up there in New Hampshire. Robo Mom, I don't know if she's still on vacation. She may be here tonight. And also, let me say hi to Vicki. And uh, sometimes Rowan is dropping in. Any, you know, so all of the mods. And also, by the way, I want to say this to, all, to cats, cats and all of the prayer warriors. Thank you so much for praying. We've got to intercede in these last days. Prayer is so important. We were so glad to see five people get saved. You know, we got knocked off the air just before I was going to let go of Richard Dolan and go into the altar call. We got knocked completely off the air. And we came back 10 minutes later and people were still wanting to get saved. That's what I'm talking about. We're, I mean, we're fighting all the odds now, but we're winning in the name of Jesus. Well, let's get right into it. Uh, uh, it's just, uh, we're just really in a time like never before. Uh, all right, here we go. I wanted to start a little early. I know it's 10 o'clock. There's some people that are gathering in and we want to get everybody in here today. Uh, it's going to be a powerful program. Give me one second here. I got to check on one more thing before we go to the word of the Lord. And, uh, hmm. Where'd that go? Where'd that go? I see that, and I don't see that. No. Maybe it's here. Okay, yeah. All right, good to see everybody's gathering in. About 190 people are already at new live stream, and looks like about uh, 300 and some already at the backup channel at YouTube. Plus, people are gathering in to our website, and uh, Roku Satellite Television, a lot of folks love to watch there. And uh, a lot of people are listening on the direct radio line. Just want to say hi to everybody that's out there, all right? Let's bring in Max. I'm staying calm because we're talking about a Cascadia subduction zone that experts have, are saying has been weakened. Is it because of this shocktober? Is it the five waves of energy? Uh, is it what David Mead said would happen in October? Planet X. Uh, is it Planet X, Nibiru, Planet Number Nine, Dwarf Star, uh, the Goblin? Uh, I mean, how many names we're going to give this thing? But is it is that what's causing all of this, or is it just simply biblical prophecy? Jesus is using whatever he needs to do. He's going to do that anyway. He said the heavens are going to shake. Uh, the, the earth and the heavens also. He said that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26. We know that Jesus said in Matthew, in, excuse me, uh, in Matthew 24, he said there would be earthquakes in diverse places. And we know that Jesus also said in Luke 21, for there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring. Men's hearts would fail them for fear for looking after those things coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head. Your redemption is drawing nigh. And it's amazing as nobody's talking about the earthquakes on the mainstream, lamestream, Fake news media, hardly at all. Maybe the ticker, maybe the ticker. Uh, but did you see President Trump today was down in Texas and he was given a big rally this evening for who? Ted Cruz. What? Ted Cruz is in a battle for his life. There's about He's ahead in the polls by about 1%, they say. So remember how many times Trump called him Lion Ted? He even tweeted it 27 times, Lion Ted. Guess what? Today, Trump went down and said, he is beautiful, Ted. <laughs> he called him beautiful, Ted. He called him Texas, Ted. Everybody's happy now. Oh, man, it's incredible what goes on. Anyway, let's get right into the word of the Lord. Max, we're going to bring Max in. We're going to Revelation chapter 6 tonight. We just want to go there. Uh, it's a very prophetic chapter, and before I get into the, I've got breaking news information on the Cascadia subduction zone. It has been weakened, and experts say the big one is coming. 
Folks, you can't have three mega earthquakes right on the subduction zone, just off the coast of Canada, just off the coast of Vancouver, Canada. You just, well, this thing is already weak, but now it's been weakened and experts are saying the big one is coming. I don't know when, I'm not, look, I don't know. But Dutch sense is concerned and, and suspicious observer and Mary Greeley and you know, all of these. And, and then you got the, you know, everybody out there, the experts, they all know this thing is coming. Well, I've been watching the earthquakes on a daily basis for over eight and a half years. I've probably reported more on earthquakes than anybody on the, in the entire internet in the world. Not an expert. But I know what I know what I can see the day approaching. All right. Now let's go right now. Max, would you read? Because there's some things that's gonna be happening, including the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the breaking of the seals. I just want to remind everyone of the end times, what's coming. Revelation chapter six from the King James Version of the Bible. Let's bring in Max to read the word of the Lord. Max. Revelation 6. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. What? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Are you serious? And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Who is going to be able to stand? Well, I can tell you the redeemed of God is going to be able to stand because we're not going to be here. We're not going to be here when God pours out his wrath upon this planet. The judgment of God will fall upon those ungodly men who have re rejected the gospel and have uh, openly blaspheme God to his face and his Christ right to Jesus. And they blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And they're a part of the new world order, the one world government, the biblical beast that you can find in the Bible in Revelation 13. 
Also, it's reference to it in Daniel chapter 7. Folks, we're living in the end times. I'm not going to mess around and play games with you. You, either get, you better get right with God and understand that the time we're living in, uh, God is coming. Listen, Christ is coming. I don't know the day nor the hour, but he's coming for his bride. He is coming for his bride. You better get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get rapture ready if you have to. But Christ is coming for his bride. And he's not coming after those that have, have been living, uh, you know, all slip shoddy. He's coming after the bride that got on the wedding garment, got oil in their lamps and in their vessels that have been made white in the blood of the lamb. And so it, it's time to repent and understand the time we're living in. Well, let's, let's take a look at this time we're living in. Let's start with the Cascadia subduction zone. The big one is coming according to experts. An apocalyptic warning has been released. We need to understand what it means. According to reports, uh, why is this happening? We'll start with the earthquakes. We've had, we just had a 4.5 earthquake just now hit Iceland. What? Iceland? Uh, but I mean, it's unbelievable what's going on, guys. But three mega earthquakes earlier this morning, uh, all in Canada, Port Hardy, Canada, just off the coast of Vancouver, right on the Cascadia subduction zone. Danger zone, subduction, danger zone, Cascadia. The big one's coming. That's what the experts say. 6.6, 6.8, 6.5. Boom, boom, boom. It's not good, folks. And then, of course, a 4.9, um, uh, 4.9 aftershock, Canada, 4.3 aftershock, Canada. 4.4 aftershock, Canada, uh, 5.0 earthquake hit Japan. And then I'm just going to give you the big ones. Okay. 4.8 Southern East Pacific rise. Also 4.6 Costa Rica. We had a 4.6 in Tiekistan, a 5.1 in Indonesia, a 4.7 in Indonesia, 5.2 earthquake in Port Hardy, Canada, 4.8 China, 4.4 Afghanistan, 4.6 Fiji, 5.1 China, uh, 4.2 Chile, 4.5 the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand, and also a 4.5 in Iceland, just to name a few of the earthquakes. 48 earthquakes the last 24 hours, but it's all about, oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. We love all our brothers and sisters in Canada. Seriously, we really, really do. And so I was in Canada preaching this year in Toronto. Sister Heidi and I went up there for, for four services. Toronto had an unbelievable packed house, 96 degrees, uh, people dancing in the aisle. I mean, it was an incredible moment. But we're living in the last days. And this Cascadia fault line has now been put on uh, uh, alert, basically. Uh, it's been weakened. It has been weakened, and so we are really reaching out uh, with the love of God. Billy Knight trains in the house tonight. Scoot over, everybody, because he, when he's got that big 18-wheeler going down the highway, listening to the broadcast, uh, he's an incredible individual that he can do that, uh, but uh, he's not the only truck driver we got, okay? Them big wheels, they keep on turning out there. All right, they really do, and so we want to say hi to everybody. <laughs> I want to say, is Mike Baseman in the house? What? He said the Trump rally in Texas was excellent. A lot of people there. Yeah, it's it's and he and look at this. Trump said that Ted was no longer lying, Ted, but said he was beautiful, Ted. He was Texas, Ted. Oh man, how things can change. Are you serious? Yeah, uh, and yeah, yeah, 18 wheels and a dozen roses. <laughs> That's another one, uh, Michelle. Thank you. Remember, Teddy Bear is coming home. 
Uh, wow. And didn't Alabama have a song, something like uh, about uh, I'm coming home? I can't remember now how that went, but they had a song. Look, what are we, why are we talking about a Billy Knight train and an 18-wheeler? Why am I even talking about this for? Because I like Billy Knight train, and I like all the truck drivers out there. And some of you are out there working hard driving late. This is a time that you can listen to this broadcast. You know I'm going to be here every evening at 10 p.m. Eastern, and you can listen to me. If, you, if you're driving down the road, keep your eyes on the road, but you can use the direct radio line, uh, which simply is this. Use the number 605-472-5791. good buddy. Just use it. It's uh, 605-472-5791. Breaker, breaker, breaker. You're going to need the access code, and that is 322-656-POUND. That's 322-656-POUND. All right. All right. We got to talk about the subduction zone. What's going on with the subduction zone? Danger zone. Well, first of all, here's what we found out. And oh, by the way, I've got a lot to talk about, a ton of stuff to cover, climate. we got a pole shift. The earth is wobbling. NASA said it. Oh, wait a minute. Here's what, uh, here's what you need to understand. Consider yourself warned. Warning, warning, apocalyptic warning. Consider yourself warned. But experts are telling us that the Cascadia subduction zone, earthquake, and tsunami will destroy everything west of Interstate 5. I'm just reading the article written by Michael Snyder. Matter of fact, uh, what's amazing is he wrote this article uh, on Saturday the 20th. The earthquakes hit on Sunday night the 21st. Actually, early in the morning this morning. So this is very prophetic. I don't think Michael Snyder understands this, but he wrote it and now we've had 6.6, 6.8, 6.5 in the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, They're off the coast of uh, Canada's Vancouver Island. Uh, We're talking uh, uh, southwestern section of Canada. We're talking all of Washington State, Seattle. We're talking about Portland. I mean, we're all talking about Oregon. We're talking about Northern California. So one day it will happen, he says. With little or no warning, the Cascadia subduction zone will produce a catastrophic earthquake and it will be accompanied by a massive tsunami. And that will essentially destroy everything west of the Interstate 5 in the Pacific Northwest. It will be the worst natural disaster up to this point in American history. I think potentially in the history of the world. And as you will see below, he says, experts are saying that we are completely and utterly unprepared for it. Matter of fact, of course, the San Andreas Fault gets more publicity, but the truth is it's the Cascadia subduction zone is capable of producing an earthquake of biblical proportion, almost 30 times more energetic than San Andrea. And anything that San Andrea fault can produce cannot compare to the Cascadia subduction zone stretching from northern Vancouver Island all the way down to northern California. And one expert recently told CBN News that all of the major cities in the region are essentially built on a time bomb. Now remember, this guy wrote this article on Saturday. The earthquakes hit early this morning. Unbelievable prophetic information here. Matter of fact, he goes on to say, it'll spread from Canada to California over 800 miles, according to Oregon State University pale seismologist, Chris Goldfinger from, he told CBN News. Matter of fact, he's a leading expert on this once unknown fault line. The lack of knowledge about it meant construction all over the Northwest went up wherever and however for many, many decades without even taking giant earthquakes 
into account. Now, the whole Pacific Northwest is very, very fragile. Essentially, our cities are turn of the century cities built on a time bomb, he says. And that kind of scenario I'm talking about has happened before, folks. The year was 1700, a massive earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone triggered a tsunami so large that it crossed the Pacific Ocean and damaged coastal towns in Japan. What? Today, the city of Seattle is one of the epicenters of America's thriving technological industries, but it was literally built on a landfill. So when the shaking comes, the ground underneath everyone's feet will literally liquefy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And at that point, virtually every major structure will collapse and multitudes upon multitudes of people will die. And those that don't die from being crushed by the falling buildings could end up dying from the falling glass and debris. And according to a head guy at FEMA, at the headquarters there, there will be three feet of broken glass. The downtown Seattle area is a result of the earthquake. So the skyscrapers will start swaying. All, a lot of them were designed to have their windows pop out, said Matt Caesar of the region's FEMA headquarters in Washington. And there will be three feet of broken glass on the roads underneath those buildings in downtown Seattle. Three feet of glass. We don't even see three feet of snow, but we will of glass. And so there won't be any heroes running around like Dwayne Johnson, you know, the rock, uh, pulling people out of collapsed buildings because nobody will be able to travel through the mountains of glass and fall in debris. Most Americans cannot even conceive of such a disaster because there's never been anything like it before. Even big budget Hollywood disaster movies can't even come close to replicating what the real thing will be like. And according to the Oregon State University pale seismologist Chris Goldfinger, the Cascadia subduction zone is capable of producing an earthquake that is almost 30 times more energetic than anything that San Andrea fault line is capable of producing. And everyone knows that Cascadia's cousin in California, the San Andrea fault line, it gets all that scary glamour from Hollywood in every movie of the year, trying to dramatize on the apocalypse that is coming. Well, the truth is San Andrea is lightweight compared to the Cascadia subduction uh, zone. Cascadia can make an earthquake almost 30 times more energetic than San Andreas fault line and it will generate a tsunami at the same time of biblical proportion. And folks, it will get worse. Seattle will be destroyed. I repeat, Seattle will be destroyed. So will Tacoma, Washington. It will be gone. And Portland, Oregon will essentially no longer exist. We're talking about complete and utter devastation on a scale that has never been seen before in modern times. But if, if the earthquake of 1700 was to happen tonight, that's exactly what we would see. At one point, the head of FEMA's Region X was quoted by the New Yorker as saying that everything west of Interstate 5 will be toast. Um, this is incredible, folks. If the entire zone gives away at once, an event that seismologists call a full margin rupture, the magnitude will be somewhere between 8.7 and 9.2. So do you understand how important it is that we had three mega quakes, 6.6, 6.8, 6.5 in less than 90 minutes, all on the Cascadia subduction fault line or, or subduction zone. And, and so guys, seriously, listen to me. Jesus said, 
there will be earthquakes in diverse places. There will be earthquakes such, such as like the world has never seen before. These are the signs of the end times. So uh, it is important. I've driven down I-5. I've driven through Seattle. I've driven from Seattle all the way to uh, Oregon. I mean, I understand. I've driven on I-5 basically all over Southern California from, from, the, uh, from right at the Mexican border all the way up um, into Los Angeles. So the good news is for those people down there, you're not part of that fault line, but if the, if the uh, Cascadia subduction zone goes at, a, at let's say, a 9.2, probably San Andrea will go also. And so you have to understand that uh, we're living in a time like we've never seen before. We're living in the most dangerous times in history. And you, all you got to do is ask the, the Indonesians if they believe there's such a thing as a, uh, an earthquake and a tsunami. And they will tell you that without question that these catastrophic, cataclysmic, apocalyptic events are coming. So it's important. I, I'm just the messenger, so don't get mad at me. Look, I live on the New Madrid fault line. Now, I'm up in the northern part of it. But if we have the earthquake of 1811 or 1812, now, if it hits down in the St. Louis area, it's going to wipe out St. Louis, Missouri, and, and uh, Memphis, Tennessee. That's not, look, it's going to reshape the Mississippi. It did that in 1812. But if that fault line all the way up here where I'm at, if it goes, it will empty Lake Michigan and create a tsunami about 100 foot high raged, raging toward um, the bunker, the Begley bunker. I'm not going to worry about it because I, I, I really think it won't matter. I mean, look, I'm leaving here. All right, I'm leaving here. I'm taking the first bus out of here, Gus. I mean, seriously. And, but whether I live or whether I die, I belong to the Lord. Okay, so, but I understand. I don't live in fear. For the Lord hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and love and a sound mind. The church is not afraid. We understand what the world's going to do. It's going to crack apart. It's got sinkholes. I mean, it's like hell is enlarging itself and that without measure. Can I preach on this? Man, I got a ton of stuff to cover. Are you serious? So the, the, uh, let's just stay with this thing for a minute. This Cascadia subduction zone is a real deal. And is Planet X got anything to do with this? Or is there a Planet X? And remember, this is Shocktober and the five waves of energy according to Mike from around the world. And we're going to get Mike on this week. He's going to be on one night this week. And we're going to ask him, Mike, wave number three is coming. It's supposed to hit the NASA deep, deep, deep probes that are way out there on October 25th. We want to get an information. Now, we did contact David Mead because David Mead said, watch out for October. We got a hold of him by email and he responded and said, I really don't have anything new to add to this. It's, well, it's, it will be what it will be. I can't add anything more to it. In other words, I've told you everything there's going to be. We're still going to see if we can get him to um, just discuss it with us before this week is over. Um, I have to tell you, the solar winds are perfectly normal on the sun at 331. There's been no solar flares. And there is no incoming asteroids, but we do have 45 fireballs that have broke through the Earth's atmosphere in the last 24 hours. Also, Hurricane Willa. While I'm still, I'm not done with the Cascadia subduction zone, but I got to look down just a little bit because look, we've got a hurricane of biblical proportion, an, an epic category five. You know, this thing is going to be catastrophic, cataclysmic. And it's going to hit Mexico and it's going to tear through Mexico headed right for the caravan. What are the odds of the, I mean, is, you can say it's, it's an act of God. You've, you've heard that, you know, if you, um, uh, if you, 
if you have an insurance on your home or whatever, they have clauses for like if a tree falls on your house or like act of God, like a meteorite or, or you, know, you know, that they will cover things and you, you want to make sure that clause is in there that they will cover even act of God, okay? An act of God. So I'm asking a question. What do you mean? If you ask the insurance companies, they would tell you that a hurricane could be considered an act of God. Okay? You'll need flood insurance because they'll try to tell you the hurricane didn't flood your house. That was the floods that did that. You'll need, so you'll, okay? But a hurricane is an act of God. So can I ask a question? Is, is it possible that an act of God is sending a Hurricane Willa? Will it? Will Hurricane Willa hit the caravan that's uh, like an army of people headed toward the U.S. border? Is that possible? I mean, I've seen a lot of things in these uh, years that we've been covering current world events, but this is one off the charts, folks. Uh, this is one off the charts. I want to say, are you serious? 761 people have gathered on our backup channel live with us right now, and I am absolutely proud of every one of you helping us build that backup channel. Would you please subscribe? Will you please share this channel with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, I mean, uh, Blogger, um, Periscope, tell everybody out there, and over on YouTube, say, hey, Pastor Begley's live. Uh, every one of his shows are live. They're on his backup channel. And the name of that channel is Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. Makes sense because we are Paul Begley Prophecy. So it would make sense. Okay. Uh, so we'll be live here for the next 70 days over on this, on this channel. Plus, let me say to everybody that's over at the uh, new live stream, you know, over 511 are watching live on new live stream right now. And I don't even know how many are at Periscope. So in other words, even though, the, you know, you have to understand the devil, uh, you know, um, don't go creeping behind my back door, okay? Uh, because the Lord is on our side. And so we want to be sure we get this, as many people informed of the end times as we can. We're running out of time. Hurricane Willa is a category five. It will hit Mexico sometime tonight, tomorrow morning, midday, whenever, but it's huge. It's a monster. And it is headed for the caravan. That is unbelievable. Well, while this is going on with her, as a matter of fact, they say this thing is extremely dangerous. According to reports, according to the Associated Press, Hurricane Willa will grow rapidly. It's an extremely dangerous Category 5 storm of the Eastern Pacific Ocean. It's on a path to smash into Mexico's western coast, and, uh, and, and it's going to tear right through the country, headed for the caravan. Oh, no, no, no. Somebody tell the caravan to slow down. Slow down or, or maybe turn around. Maybe turn, they should turn around. And uh, who's paying them? Somebody called George Soros. I don't know. I'm just saying. Somebody's paying these people. Anyway, while that's going on, let me tell you what else is happening. Um, you, it's getting crazy, guys. It's getting crazy. Uh, 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 are you serious? A pole shift? Now they're talking pole shift. That's all we need right now. We don't need that unless that's what God wants. And he said it in Isaiah 24. Let me run over there and take a peek at this, guys. We have a report on a pole shift situation that seems to be quite, um, I don't know what to say. It's uh, pole shifts are just that. They're pole shifts. But here, you know, we've been hearing about it a lot, but let me find the uh, information I have on that. Give me just one second. I'll find it. I had it right here. Here it is. Is it climate change? What? Is it climate change? that's creating the pole shift. Well, according to Pam Wright, she wrote an article and it's according to NASA, this is from the Weather Channel, uh, they're saying back, on, back in September that uh, for the first time, scientists are identifying the Earth's wobble. Uh-oh, is that from the five waves of energy? 
Well, the earth is wobbling as it spins, according to the Weather Channel and scientists. The decrease in Greenland's ice mass is the main reason for the wobble, is what NASA is saying. I don't know. Changes in the Earth's wobble could impact the accuracy of satellite tools like your GPS systems. And climate change is impacting how Earth spins on its axis. That's according to NASA. And over the past century, Earth's axis, the imaginary line that passes through the North and South Poles, has drifted about four inches and a decrease in Greenland's ice mass is the main contributor to the wobble, is according to NASA. And as temperatures increase throughout the 20th century because of humans, are you sure it's our fault? Uh, how about all this radiation? It's 18% more than it was two years ago. How about that? But they're gonna blame it on me and you. I'm not debating that the temperature's higher. I'm not debating that the ice caps or that the ice uh, is melting in Greenland. I'm not debating these that we're having record earthquakes, record volcanoes, record rainfalls of monsoons and typhoons and cyclones and hurricanes and tsunamis. No, I'm not debating that these things are increasing. Jesus said that was gonna happen. But are you gonna blame it on us? Maybe, maybe it's just biblical prophecy. Maybe God is shaking the universe like he said he would. Maybe the stars will start falling from the sky like a fig tree would cast its untimely figs like he said it would. Maybe there will be wars and rumors of wars and nations shall rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdoms like he said it will. Um, anyway, they're talking about a pole shift, a total of 7,500 gigatons, the weight of more than 20 million empire state buildings of Greenland's ice has melted into the ocean during this same time period. And NASA said in a press release, this makes Greenland one of the top contributors of the mass being transferred to the ocean causing sea levels to rise and consequently a drift in the Earth's spin axis. So we're about ready to have a pole shift. There's a geometrical effect that if you have a mass that is 45 degrees from the North Pole, which Greenland is, or from the South Pole, like uh, you know some of the glaciers down there, it will have a bigger impact on shifting the Earth's spin axis than a mass that is right near the pole, okay? So scientists have, are believing that the glacial rebound plays a role in the planet's wobble, but it's not the major contributor scientists previously thought. So during the last ice age, heavy glaciers depressed Earth's surface much like a mattress depresses when you sit on it. As the ice melts or is removed, the land slowly rises back to its original position, NASA says. And in the new study, which relied heavily on statistical analysis of such rebound, scientists figured out that the glacial rebound is likely to be responsible for only about a third of the polar drift in this 20th century. So we're in the middle of a pole shift, a wobble, uh, and that's going to affect the weather and the climates and the seasons. And, uh, you know, these are some of the signs of the last days. We were told this was going to happen. We understand it's going to happen. And now we're witnessing it as it happens. It's quite extraordinary what's taking place, but it's the Cascadia subduction zone is, is been weakened uh, in the last 24 hours due to three mega earthquakes that hit right on it. I'm telling you folks, this thing is a dangerous situation. Well, is it because of that seismic wave 
that, the, that went through the body of the earth that I reported on, I know I was the only guy that reported on it. I know right now. I just, go Google it. I was the only guy that brought it up that, hey, whoa, we've had a seismic wave go through the body of the earth. I reported on this when? Sunday? Sunday night? Or was it Saturday? I did Saturday. Saturday in the park. It was not the 4th of July. No, it was Saturday. And I was reading to you the, the fact that a seismic wave is a wave that travels through the earth, not at the surface, but through the body of the earth, uh, most often as a result of tectonic earthquake or maybe an explosion or maybe the five waves of energy um, or maybe it's Planet X's gravitational pull, okay? But there are two types of seismic waves. There's a body wave and a surface wave, all right? Surfing waves, you see, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of surface waves. And there are two kinds of body waves, primary and secondary. Surface waves are, of course, water waves, and they travel just under the Earth's surface. They travel more slowly than a body wave. The above, uh, so what we're finding out, I think, that this body wave that went through the Earth, maybe it's from the gravitational pull from Planet X or Nibiru, if there is one, or maybe it was the five waves of energy, the compression, as Mike from around the world likes to call it, the compression ahead of the wave. Like in a pool, if you have a splash, it creates a wave, but it instantly way out there, it already starts a compression, okay? Because with every action, there's a reaction. Don't make me, I can't break this down. Do I look like a, 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 a seismologist or what was this one guy, a palo? Seismologist, what is that? So, I mean, no, but I understand at least enough about the laws of physics that, uh, you know, every action is a reaction. So there's all kinds of stuff going on right now, guys. We got to stay on top of this because uh, the earth is shaking and quaking. The devil's back is breaking. My mind is aching. We're not faking. Heidi did scramble me some eggs without bacon. And what kind of medication are you really taking? But what all of, we're not faking. We're in the end times, okay? And we're watching the earthquakes. We realize they're real. We know they're real, okay? We know they're real. You know, when we were in Israel, we were standing there looking around all the things, and we started talking about the Mount of Olives splitting in half. What? I mean, but that's what the Bible says is going to happen when the Lord returns and puts his foot on the Mount of Olives in Zechariah 14. This earthquake will split the Mount of Olives. It will rock Jerusalem. 7,000 people will die and the waters will flow from the hinder sea to the former sea. They'll flow from the Dead Sea to the, to the Mediterranean. It'll be unbelievable. But um, that, we, that hasn't happened yet. And so these things are coming. And we're just letting people know that the Cascadia subduction zone is been, has been weakened. I repeat, you have been warned. That's what the experts are saying. You have been warned that this thing is a ticking time bomb. Well, let me also put out another warning, a warning to the NFL. Their ratings have tanked. According to reports, Week seven of the NFL season, fans continue to leave thousands of empty seats in NFL stadiums. Matter of fact, the Sunday night football game last night uh, between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Kansas City Chiefs was the lowest Sunday night football game rating in history. And when the Dallas Cowboys went to Washington, D.C. to play the Washington Redskins, which they are arch rivals and have been for like 30 years, there were thousands of empty seats at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. And that's with Washington Redskins almost in first place. What's happened to the NFL? Empty seats everywhere, dying ratings. It's because they lied to their fan base. They, they made a rule in the middle of the summer 
that they would not tolerate anyone not standing and respecting the flag. And they told all the people this at the end of the season, right after the Super Bowl. You know, they came out and said, look, we're sorry. That, that didn't work out well. Everybody's going to stand from now on. So guess what? People went out and bought season tickets because they said, okay, the NFL has learned their lesson. And so season ticket holders bought season tickets and said, I'll be back next season because the NFL has repented. But then just before the preseason began, Roger Goodell and some of the others backed down, changed their policy and said, nope, we're not going to do it. We're just going to let any, the players do whatever they want. Guess what, folks? People are staying away from the stadium. You can't mess with people's pride of their nation. You talking about veterans. You're talking about people whose sons and daughters are in uniform. You're talking about people whose family members died on the battlefield for this nation. You cannot disrespect that and expect the people to still pay large prices to sit in the stadium and watch the football game. They're not going to do it. They don't care how much they like their team. And boy, the NFL, you've got a problem now because you've had, you had a year to fix it. You said you fixed it. You let the people buy the tickets and then you lied about it. Now you've really hurt yourself. You've shot yourself in both feet. So guess what, Roger DeCadell? What are you going to do? I'm going to make a prediction. They're going to eliminate the national anthem from all the football games. That'll be how he fixes it. Instead of standing up for the veterans, for the nation, you know, instead of doing the right thing, he's going to eliminate the national anthem. You watch. I'm just predicting. This is a prediction. It's not a prophecy. I could be wrong. But I'm going to make a prediction that he eliminates the national anthem from the, all the games. And he thinks that will fix the problem. The truth is, it will be the final nail in the coffin. Because the American people will say, uh-uh, that's not going to work. I'm telling you folks, don't mess with the veterans and the people whose family members have died and suffered and have paid awful bloody price for the freedom of this nation. And so I'm sharing this with you. I'm sharing it with you. People don't like to be, it doesn't matter if the games are, it don't matter if you like football or not. It don't matter if you like basketball, or baseball, it doesn't matter. What matters is if, if something's been disrespected or not. And that's really, I tell you, the F, I'm just reporting on to you what's happening out there. And uh, the observation is the NFL's in trouble. If they don't fix it now, and even if they fix it now, nobody's going to believe them. They're going to sit back and wait to see if they really mean it now. So I think that what the NFL is going to do is say, okay, I, I tell you what we got to do. We're just going to eliminate the national anthem. We just won't have one. That'll be the final nail. The American people won't forget. Um, let me tell you something else going on right now. It's unbelievable. Um, if you talk Middle East, as we said this morning, King Abdullah has just canceled the peace treaty with Israel. There's a, they've had a peace treaty since 1994. King and Israel was wanting to extend it, renew it, keep it going. Uh, Jordan says, no, we do not want to have a peace agreement with you anymore. So what Jordan's going to do is take back 1,000 acres of farmland from uh, the Israeli farmers who have been living there and farming the land for over one, for 98 years, since 1920. These guys own the land. The Israeli farmers actually have a deed to the property. They own it. But it don't matter. King Abdullah of Jordan is going to take the farms from these landowners and shove them back over the border into Israel. Israel is not happy with this because this was a major part of the peace. Listen to this. Part of that peace agreement called the status quo was Israel, Israeli citizens, Jews were allowed to live in Jordan and farm a thousand acres of land 
and owned the land, even though they were in the nation of Jordan. And they were allowed to do it without any harm, any hassle. Uh, and meanwhile, Israel owns the Temple Mount. And Israel said, okay, but Jordan, you can manage it. And we'll let you tell us how it works. And we won't build a temple and we won't send any Jews up there to pray. And the Muslims can pray all they want. And let's have peace. And they signed this peace treaty. Well, guess what? If Jordan don't want it anymore and takes back the thousand acres and kicks the Jewish landowners, then what's going to keep Netanyahu from saying, well, if that's the way you want to do it, we'll take back the Temple Mount. We'll run it from now on. And matter of fact, we'll probably just build our temple while we're at it. You can still come up here and pray if you want to. So folks, this thing you're seeing with Jordan might be a precursor to the bigger, what's called the ultimate deal, maybe even the covenant with many that uh, the Bible says in Daniel 9, 27. And so what I'm saying to you is, I'm not endorsing anything. I'm just reporting to you that we may be getting ready to see the signing of the covenant with many and that this move by Jordan might be doing nothing more but clearing the way for that deal, bigger deal to be signed. And this is a prophecy alert. So we're going to keep a close eye on this. We talked about it some in today's show, but I wanted to speak a little bit more about this as we go forward because it certainly is a big, big deal here. And we're going to keep a close eye on it. Now, don't forget what I told you about the New Mexico observatories. Why did they close it? Was it because the Chinese had, had uh, you know, hacked into the antenna and was, was spying on America? Uh, maybe. Was it because uh, two of the employees were downloading porn uh, on the government computers? I doubt that very seriously. That's not the reason that 24 men in black would show up in black helicopters and black computers and take over the entire uh, New Mexico Sunspot New Mexico Observatory and shut the entire town down, tell the, the, the sheriff to leave the county, shut the entire thing down, speak, not speak to anyone, close the post office and move half of the people that live there to California. No, 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 no. It's something way bigger than that. And so here we go. For those of you who are maybe were not with us to, uh, this morning, I'm going to read what's been happening uh, in the last few months. And literally cameras and telescopes and observatories and probes and rovers are being shut down as if they don't want us to see what's up there. What do you want me to do with this? Here we go. Check this out. We're in the last days. Um, following that mysterious evacuation and shutdown of the New Mexico Solar Observatory in Sunspot, New Mexico, back on September 6th. Along with the public access being removed from the Axis 3, excuse me, Axis 232D network dome camera located in Sydney, Australia. That's been closed. We're now seeing all kinds of failures and shutdowns and unexplained uh, cameras being going, going dark. March 27th, NASA delayed the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. It was supposed to have been sent up into space and, and the greatest telescope ever put up there. Well, guess what? They canceled the launch. They're not going to send it up there till the year 2020, they say, because they need to do a little bit more testing on the telescopes and intricate system uh, um, tennis court size sun shield. So they're going to delay it. On June 10th, NASA has placed the Opportunity Mars rover into safe mode due to a sandstorm on Mars. Well, the sandstorm is over, but they still have the rover offline. Matter of fact, September 1st, both SpaceX and, and, and using their Falcon 9 rocket ship was going to launch along with Israel's Aerospace Industries, 
They were sending up the most powerful satellite Israel ever was going to send to space, the Amos 6 satellite. But, the, but both the Falcon 9 rocket and the satellite were destroyed when it went to launch and on the launch pad explosion and billions of dollars was lost. On September 5th, a hole, a small hole, was discovered on the International Space Station that Russia says somebody's attempting to sabotage and bring down the International Space Station. Matter of fact, there's three astronauts up there right now stuck up there. And um, the, uh, they're waiting on somebody to bring them supplies. And hey, oh, by the way, there's still that little hole in the side of this thing. They got it duct taped. <laughs> I don't know about using just duct tape, but anyway, that's another story. September 19th, Mars' rover called Curiosity has also gone offline for an unknown glitch. What? And then there's the Hubble telescope. How dependable has that thing been? Unbelievable. But it's gone into safe mode because they say they got a failed gyroscope. What is a gyroscope? And then October 10th, NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. It went offline because it's got a failed gyroscope. Is there some kind of uh, gyroscope disease? And then October 11th, the, uh, a rocket used to transport the astronauts or the cosmonauts up to the International Space Station to help bring supplies and food and water and maybe better duct tape for that hole in the side of the uh, space station, the mission launch failed, forcing the two Russian cosmonauts to make an emergency landing. So those three guys are still stuck up there. And don't worry, we can't send a shuttle to help them. Remember, Obama canceled the NASA shuttle program when he was in the White House. And then there is NASA's solar heliospheric observatory or soho remember that famous camera well guess what it's offline it will be for several more weeks um the last time it took a picture was september the 19th so why and then out of the 36 observ observatories on the planet seven of them were simultaneously their webcams were shut off simultaneously the same day and are offline, which means virtually every media outlet that understands what's going on is not really even reporting this. We've gone dark. We can barely see anything up there. Everything's getting shut down. What is it? What is it that they saw? Did they see? Have they seen? Is that why? Is it Planet X? Is it Nibiru? Is it some kind of asteroid that's headed this way? I mean, I don't know. But why did they shut everything down? What are they hiding from the world? Or are they? Or are they just on a string of bad luck? Well, one thing's for sure. We are witnessing all kinds of strange, unexplained situations that we never thought we would see, including Trump calling Lion Ted, Beautiful Ted, and Texas Ted. It's amazing how things can change so quickly. Depends what you need and when you need it. I'm going to ask you a question. If everything that I'm telling you is pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ, then it would be very important that we are saved and that we have our name written in the Lamb's book of life. You see, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. No, no, no. But that the world through him might be saved. You might say, Pastor, I've heard a lot about being saved. But I, and, I, and I'm watching this. And maybe you're new. And maybe this is the very first show you've ever watched with me. And so this guy's, you know, he's kind of out there, but he does have some great information. But maybe you're watching. Maybe you've been watching me for three months, maybe for six months. And you're, you like the show and you like the information and it's really stimulating. But at the end of the day, there's an emptiness. 
deep in your soul. Because if I'm right, if the Word of God is true, Jesus is coming very, very soon. And you don't. None, nobody. I don't want anybody to be left behind. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to consider to make the greatest decision of your life. I'm going to ask you to give your life to Jesus Christ, to be born again, to repent of your sins. I'll help you even. We'll pray. And you might not know what to say or how to say it, but if you'll call upon the name of the Lord, and I'll, you can even repeat after me, I want to be saved and, and pray the prayer. If you're ready to give the Lord your heart, he said he will be found with you. Are you ready? Are you ready to be saved? I'm going to play a song right now. And if you'd like to be born again, this is the greatest moment in history. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Let him set you free. And, and just, just let's get ready to go to heaven because, folks, time is running out. Believe me. Time is running out. As this song plays, just type, I want to be saved. I'll, I'll, I'll write your name down. Just type, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I'm just a poor. MB wants to be saved. Angel Lawrence is rededicating. But right now, MB wants to be saved. God bless you. What about you? Bobby Garrison wants to be saved. God bless you, Bobby. I'm going to pray with you in just a moment. No toll nor danger in that bright land to which I go. I'm going there. Let's make a decision today. Today is the day of salvation. Some of you at New Live Stream, you need to get saved. Somebody at Periscope needs to get saved. Somebody at my website right now needs to be saved. Ron Richards wants to be saved. Today is the day of salvation. This is the accepted time. Kathy Wheeler is rededicating. Praise God. I know dark clouds will gather round me. I know my way is rough and steep the Du Bois family's rededicating beautiful field Chino is rededicating I believe what about you are you ready to go to heaven is your name written in the Lamb's book of life do you want to be born again? Just type, I want to be saved. Jerry Digenter is rededicating. God bless you, Jerry. So I'm a going there over Jordan. I'm just a goal over home. This is your moment. I can see the lights of home shining before me. Alan Newland is rededicated. Alan Newland. Folks, 
Uh, MB wants to be saved. Bobby Garrison wants to be saved. Ron Richards wants to be saved. Uh, I'm not sure if Jerry's rededicating or he wants to be saved, but, and, I, and, and there's several others rededicating. And I know there's others watching right now at Roku Satellite Television or maybe on Periscope or at my website or maybe even on this new YouTube channel or maybe you're watching it on my regular YouTube channel on the archives or maybe you're on Google Plus watching this or Facebook or Twitter, all of which will be archived and maybe you're listening on the direct radio line. This is the time to give your life to Jesus Christ. I may not have your name. I may not be able to write it down, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Jesus Christ can see you and getting your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life is a whole lot more important than on Pastor Begley's notebook. I can tell you that. Well, let's pray. You can repeat after me or pray along with me. Pastor Begley can't save you, but the people are gonna pray with you as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, I wanna be saved. I wanna be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life and to break the chains. To break, break, break every chain that's binding my soul. I want to accept Christ as my Savior. So I confess my sins and I repent of my sins and I call upon the name of Jesus. Pam Thompson also rededicating. Because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Christ rose from the dead. I believe that the Lord ascended into heaven, and I believe he's coming back again. Judy Hopper also rededicating soon and very soon, and I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, precious name. Praise the Lord. Are you serious? Are you serious? Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. Your names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. The angels are rejoicing in heaven. Are you serious? You become one of God's children. You've been set free from the bondage of sin. And you're, <laughs> you become a, 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 one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. We are just one in Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Lord, for, your, for the joy of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Uh, wow, the Lord is so good, folks. I'm on a spiritual high right now. I'm on a spiritual high with Kevin Wilson singing. What?
like my feet ain't touching the ground. Oh, I'm on a spiritual so good to see five of you that we know of today that it has to be saved and four tonight. And you know, uh, we will continue to see people coming to Jesus Christ. Many people were rededicated today and tonight. God is adding to the church daily such as should be saved. He's speaking to the hearts of so many. And I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to say to those of you who got saved, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and uh, you're my brother and my sister. If you need a Bible, look, I encourage you to get baptized. Find a pastor, find a church. Maybe it's a Messianic congregation somewhere. Tell them you got saved, you want to be baptized, because that's what Jesus did. You're getting ready to go home. If you need a Bible, send an email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That email address is MissZD. 01 at hotmail.com. You can request a Bible or an anointed prayer cloth if you're sick. It's got healing scriptures on it. We anoint it with oil in the name of the Lord and we'll send it to you for free. The Bible's free. We'll pay the postage. The prayer cloth is free. We'll pay the postage. And if you know someone who's very, very ill that we need to get a blanket to them, we'll send that to them as well or a chemo cap for those that are going through chemotherapy. We'll anoint them with oil and mail them out to people free of charge and pay the postage. And that's because of our faithful partners, our faithful, thank you. And let me say to you again, thank you for your faithfulness uh, and for your, your, you know, look, God loves a cheerful giver and you folks are truly that. You can out give God. You can't outgive God. Thank you for being so faithful. Thank you for stepping up to the plate. God bless you for being obedient to the Lord. If you, we need your help tonight. We do. We do. Um, and if you'll step up to the plate, God will certainly step up to the plate. I promise you that. If you give, it shall be given unto you. This is what Jesus said. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. And so if you'd like to give tonight, go to my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. And hit the easy button with Billy Night Train. That's right, the easy button. That's right at the top. It says donate. Click right there or scroll down and there's a button. There's even an easy button. Just boom, hit that and give what the Lord has laid on your heart 
and truly you can be blessed, all right? You can be blessed. And if you would, uh, um, maybe you want to use your phone and give. That's another real easy way to give. Just grab your cell phone and you can text give right now, real simple. Here's what, here's what you do. You text the word give to this number, 765-327-4200. That's 765-327-4200. One more time. That number is 765-327-4200. And text the word give. And Paul Bagley Prophecy Ministries will come right up on your phone and you can give just as freely as you like and quickly and easy to do, all right? And uh, praise God and thank you. Or if you'd like to write me, do it that way, the old-fashioned way. Just simply send a check or money order in the mail and just write me at this address, Paul Begley Prophecy. That's Paul Begley Prophecy, Paul Begley Prophecy, 1048-B. That's 1048-B. One more time, 1048-B, Sagamore Parkway West. That is Sagamore Parkway West. One more time, Sagamore, one word, Sagamore Parkway West, box 33, that's box 33, box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana. That's West Lafayette, Indiana. West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. That's 47906. One more time on that zip code, 47906. Oh, by the way, people have been calling and calling. Pastor, I want to get that. Do you have a DV set on the, um, the four interviews with... Dr. Irvin Baxter, is there a DVD series? Can I get that? The answer is yes. You guys, we weren't going to do that, but you guys rung the phone off. We've got people's names wrote down. So we went ahead and we've put together a four DVD set. Uh, it's at our website. If you go to my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com, if you go there right now, go there right now, and click on the home page. Just go to publiclyprophecy.com and the first thing that will pop up on your screen is the final day's prophecy. Click right on that banner. Click right there to order your set today. They're coming in in about a week. We're gonna ship them out just as fast as they hit the door. It's called the final day's prophecy DVDs, four of them. Uh, you get the entire set for the ridiculous we just decided to look to just basically do this thing as cheap as possible, $25, and that's including the freight. So basically, I'm just trying to help people get their hands on this tremendous teaching. Uh, it, is a, it is a great four-disc set called The Final Day's Prophecy. Nobody's ever, you never hear of anybody doing this, but you got Dr. Irvin Baxter and Pastor Paul Begley at a table discussing Bible prophecy on four of the most important subjects of the end times. You don't see ministries teaming up like that. Uh, you don't see people even just sitting down talking like that. A lot, of, a lot of ministries are, you know, they're just do their own thing and they don't want to be put on the spot. Look, I'm the kind of guy that, look, I'll listen to everybody. All right, I'll listen to everybody and I'll give everybody a chance. Uh, you know, to say what they say and let's look at what the scripture says and let's not be so dogmatic to say we know everything and that we got everything figured out. I'm willing, look, uh, and so Dr. Baxter is a very well-respected uh, biblical prophecy preacher and teacher and he has for over 50 years of ministry. Now check this out. Go there right now to publiclyprophecy.com. Some of you need to go ahead and place your order because I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. We just bought a limited supply of these. If you're going to get yours, you should buy it. You should go ahead and click on there and put your order in, okay? And then we'll be sitting there holding it for you. As soon as these hit the door, we're going to crank them right out. It's called The Final Day's Prophecy, a four DVD series. Four, I mean, four. you get four DVDs in one beautiful case. 
It's called The Final Day's Prophecy. And Paul Begley and uh, Dr. Irvin Baxter are discussing four, I mean, this is amazing. The first one's called The Final Peace Deal. Great DVD. And then when uh, uh, the second one's called The Red Heifer. What? Nobody's even talking about it hardly, except the guys that really understand it. The third one is The Mark of the Beast. Everybody wants to understand that, and they should. And the fourth one is The Two Witnesses of the Lord. Four main, major topics of the end times in one series. One four DVD set, and we're, we're just... You know what? We're going to do it for $25. So go ahead and get yours placed right now. It's a ridiculous price, actually. But that's good because we're, we're, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm just trying to get this one out to people. I want you to get this teaching. I want, there's, you've got family members that you can put this DVD in, these DVDs in, and they will watch and they will learn. How many times have you heard them say, do you know anything about that peace agreement they're talking about? Or somebody else will say, uh, did you hear, have you heard about the red heifer? Or always you hear people say, what do you know about the mark of the beast? I'm talking about people that's not saved. They'll listen to this because it's not boring. I, I wanted to make sure I kept those interviews flowing uh, because I knew there's a, a, a large audience of people going to watch them. And I want them to get right with God. And I want the Christians to understand what's going on. And you might not agree with all of it. That's okay. It's great to watch anyway. And it's a great teaching tool to help prepare people to get right with God, to get saved. It's a great, you know what, Miss E.D., that was exactly right. It's a great, a real nice Christmas gift to give to somebody. I mean, look, let's just face it. You give this as a Christmas gift to someone, say, hey, would you like this four-part DVD? This, I mean, this is so rare. I don't know if I'll ever be able to sit down with a major biblical prophecy teacher that, and, and get them to in, let me interview them for four, four subjects and put into a DVD series. I don't know if I could ever get anybody else willing to do it. So I really appreciate. Uh, and I wasn't even gonna do that when I interviewed him. I just wanna talk about the four big topics. You people kept calling. You kept begging me to put together and make this a CD, I mean a DVD series. It's a DVD. So it'd be a great, great thing to do. Get your order in, okay? They're gonna come in in about a week. So get your order in, all right? All right. Well, God bless all of you. I love all of you. We had a great time. I hope you've enjoyed the programs. I hope you, thank you for being here and thank you for uh, subbing, uh, becoming a subscriber of this backup channel, Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. Help us build this channel. We've got to protect ourselves. Guys, I'm serious. You don't understand. It's so difficult now on what we can say and can't say. We're, we're, we're literally dancing on the head of a pin to try to figure out, you know, we're trying our best to do, to, to inform people what's going on. And, 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 and my job is to get people to Christ. And, and, and man, it's getting tough. So we need your help. We need your offerings and we need your prayers. These are very important things because it makes a difference in the kingdom. So thank you for being faithful. Thank you. God bless all of you. We love you. Guys, I'll be back tomorrow. Oh, yeah, you know. I'm going to get up early. What? I'll be up early. I mean, look, I was covering the earthquakes at 6.30 this morning. Are you serious? Look, we'll outwork the devil. I ain't got no problem. I'll outwork him in the name of Jesus. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. You pray for one another. God bless all of you. We love you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. YouTube videos tomorrow and tomorrow's live show at 12 noon Eastern. My guest... Tomorrow is Pastor Carl Gallops. He is amazing. You don't want to miss that broadcast. 12 noon Eastern tomorrow. Thank you to all the moderators. Mrs. D, I hope you're feeling better. I really do. We're praying for your strength and lifting up everybody in prayer. I've got a lot of prayer requests that have been coming in. A lot of people sick. I'm praying for this, um, Jane, you and Mitch. You're probably not watching live, but I know you're out there in California. I know you guys both have been battling health issues. But the Lord is strengthening you and bringing you through. And I got a word for you. You're getting ready to come in to a season of rest. That was the Lord gave me that when I was praying for you guys today. He's getting, he's getting ready to bring you into a season of rest. And you need it. God bless. Are you serious, guys? I'll see you guys tomorrow. What? 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 What?
Are you serious? 